Good afternoon. Welcome to Afternoon Delight. This week, we have Natalie Portman got the Best Actress Award, Gigi Hadid attending the show for Tommy Hilfiger, Camille Grammer honored a race to, e to end women's cancer event and the election. Stay tuned. Afternoon Delight is next. Hello, welcome back to Afternoon Delight. I'm Sha. I'm Tai. I'm Yong Miao. Jie. So guys, what do we have today for Afternoon Delight? We have a lot of things going on today. Yes, it's the Hollywood Film Awards. And believe it or not, Natalie Portman got the Best Actress Award. You know what? All my impression on Natalie Portman still stays in the Leon professional. I just cannot believe it that she has already grown up as such a wonderful woman. Yeah, I and I have kids. Yeah. I, all my impressions stay on that, that film. I love that film. And I, and I believe that she must have won more awards than this one, which is really amazing. And these years, I just heard so many news about her and like how intelligent she is. Like she graduated from ha Harvard with a Bachelor of Arts degree in psychology. And it's also hard to imagine how she did it, like being both successful in her career and also in the education. Do you think we can do that? Um. I think so, <laughs> because uh, you know, like a lot of women, uh, like her, is very intelligent yeah. and uh, yeah. they're very good at so much stuff. Um, I think uh, she's pregnant at the back home. Yes, she's having her second baby. Can you believe that? Yeah, like, it's amazing. A fourteen-year-old girl that has already had two babies now. It is time really flies, and it is, and it feels like. I feel like it's getting more no normal for the female celebrities to be pregnant and to be in public while they are pregnant. But you know what? They still have the perfect body figure. Yes. Oh, I know that. And when you mentioned the perfect body, body figure, that reminds me the Russian supermodel. I'm not sure whether you guys heard of it. She's, her name is Eliana Perminavo. Oh, on her in Instagram, all of her, all of her pictures about her pregnant and her perfect body after after giving the birth of the babies, and she's three kids mother, but she has the perfect body that I'm really jealous of. That's amazing, three kids. I know. Yeah, yeah and I also know some other female celebrities like Blake Lively, Sophie Hunter, which is the Sherlock. Benedict's wife, Miranda yeah. Kerr, and they really love their job, don't they? Yeah. And what was surprised me was that, like, I'm just so impressed by their body figure. Yeah. When you talk about body figure again, that reminds me of Gigi Hardid. Oh, yeah. I, I know. model. Yeah, I know. And I think Yu Miao loves her. Yeah. She's my favorite model. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, have sense. you guys realized that recently she just signed uh, to have the first, uh, first ever show of Tommy Hilfiger, but she was being complaining she was not tall enough. Can you guys believe that? Yeah, she's already very tall. She's like huge. I know she's five <laughs> foot ten. Like to us, <laughs> of course. And she she was wearing a poncho in the first ever Tommy Hilfiger shows. And the 65-year-old, 65-year-old designer was complaining she was not tall enough, so she has to be hiding yeah, in that. I know. Yeah, I just yeah, can't I believe that they do that. Complaining about something like she, the like the stage work is very weird. I mean, I saw her in person in New York Fashion Week. Really? And yes, you? I did. And uh, I saw the show. It's called like what is that? Alexandra one. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, she was perfect. I mean, I loved her, but she people is. just like complaining like the, her stage work is weird. I don't know, <laughs> but I love it. They say because they are 
like compared to other supermodels, she was not tall enough. So when you were in the fashion show, did you see other supermodels are super tall, like much taller than her? Yeah, actually. <laughs> well, how tall should yeah. a supermodel be? I mean, I think it depends the show. You know, like so many, not so many people, like not all of us can fit the clothes that supermodel fits. So you know, yeah. They're really straight to the, the design. Mm hmm. Hopefully, there's gonna be some day that on the show, we can like people like us could be on it. <laughs> yeah, that'll be a dream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills Camel Grandma honor at the race to end the women's cancer event on Sunday, November 6, 2013. Over the weekend, she traveled to Washington, D.C. to participate in 2016 uh, National Race to End the Women's Cancer event. So, um, I think it is very brave of her. Uh, she actually diagnosed, uh, uh, I think, a kind of cancer. It's like early age. Uh, in 2013, and uh, she recovered from it, and she's very brave to open an event for helping other women's cancer event. So I think it's kind of amazing. What do you guys think yeah, about it? That just reminds me of a uh, singer back in China, because mm -hmm. there is a singing competition in China called the Voice of China, mm -hmm. and one girl who was very intelligent and sang, she passed away. Yeah, like I'm, s I feel so. Sorry for her because she got Is breast. Is it Yao Beina? Yes, yeah, 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 yes, that's like her. her. Like she got the breast cancer as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but unluckily she just didn't recover yeah. from that. Yeah, a lot of singers like really upset about it and sent some Twitter. No, I mean like kind of things on similar to Twitter back in China and kind of. Yeah, and I that. think that's just such a loss in yeah. the Chinese, yeah, in the singing and field in China. Mm -hmm. And you know what? She has shot a series of nude portrait in order to encourage people who are suffering from the breast cancer wow, and to support. Brave. Yes, and to support the the anti breast cancer. Yeah, that's really brave. I was so touched by that when I heard this news. I know. I I can. I think I kind of saw the news and uh, several pictures about that. Mm -hmm. She was very brave because she, she was all naked, you know, and uh, she pushed like the p other people to respect women who had to do something with the breast cancer because, you know, for women, it is kind of hard to accept that. And I think that's what it's about. It's about generating awareness and putting the message out there and, mm -hmm. and uh, owning your body and just putting it out there. And this is where I'm at in life and uh, I'm going to talk about it and I'm going to share it with others with, you know, the photography. That yeah. also reminds me of Julie. Angela Jolie? Yes. Mm -hmm. I think she is really brave. That yeah. Like, since she found out that she will have the potential of the breast cancer, and she just suddenly did the uh, surger surgery. And I think that's really going to be, that encourage a lot of people. Like, back in China, we do have a lot of, we do have a lot of, article about her and they encourage a lot of people doing uh, like exams, checking their body and working out. I think that's really a good sign. Yeah. yeah. And I heard that I've watched some news about Angela and Julie as well that um, her cancer, like not her cancer, like this kind of um, disease has something to do with a family heredity. Like her mom died from the the same cancer as well, and I think Very her early. grandmother as yeah. well. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's awful. Like, yeah. and I heard that her doctor said she, it is eighty seven percent for her to be diagnosed of that the cancer. Yeah. yeah, that's terrible. I mean, she did what she has to, you know. So, yeah, yeah. And I that just reminds me of the um. Another celebrity in China, like she passed away from, she died from the same cancer like 10 years ago, and she didn't want to do the surgery to keep herself a complete body. Um, yeah, so finally. Yeah, sad about it. Yes. I think Tai wants to talk about like the, uh, oh. the movie oh, right. <laughs> you are very excited about. Oh, a <laughs> little bit, movie. right, right. Uh, well, I'm uh, a little bit leaning towards uh, fantasy films as of late, and uh, we have a new entry in the Star Wars series. Actually, mm -hmm. it's more of a, a sideways to the story. Um, a spin-off known as Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Uh, the r latest trailer was revealed uh, earlier this week, 
and uh, I'm just a little bit curious about uh, where the story is going to go and how that's going to tie into the pre-existing movies. Right now we have seven theatrical episodes in addition to the TV uh, shows, the books and whatnot. And uh, this is a new theatrical film, but it's off to the side that sets up uh, the, uh, the famous episode four, the original Star Wars from 1977. So I think that there's a lot of positive buzz on this, and I'm just a little bit curious about, uh, you know, Star Wars and uh, you know its mass appeal to people. And, uh, and Natalie Portman, of course, was in the Star Wars prequels. Natalie mm -hmm. Portman did episodes one, two, and three, mm -hmm. and um, and whether or not she'll appear in the the sequels, uh, it's hard to say right now. It's not impossible that she might come back as a ghost. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I don't we know. We have a lot of fans back in China you too. Do. Yeah, like a China. lot of them like obsessed with it. Especially my boyfriend. Your boyfriend? She was like, yeah. We, did he make you watch them? Yeah, definitely he did. But yeah, I like it. I, I watch like, um, I think one or two of them, but uh -huh. not like all of them. I think there is a store um, at downtown. Okay. Um, we found like the first one, um, I don't know, like the first version of Star Wars back then. So okay. she was, he was like very sad too. So when you're watching it with the boyfriend, what are you thinking? Um, I think he's so excited about it. And, uh, you're I thinking he's excited, but are you following the story? Are you enjoying it or is it really not your thing? Um, yeah, it's kind of my thing, but I love it. And uh, so next, we're going to come back from Perfect Pets. Hi there, I'm Aloha, four months old brown tiger, and I'm very friendly and curious. Hi, I'm Felicia. I'm a 10 month old lab and pointer mix. I'm very energetic and needs lots of exercise, but I'm also very loving. Hi, I'm Moira. I'm a 12 week old kitten, and I'm not interested in anything other than playing with you. Hello, I'm Winslow. I'm a five-year-old lab mix. I'm very outgoing and sociable, and very well-mannered. To find out more about adoption for these pets or others, contact the Cooley Region Humane Society at 781-4014. Hi, welcome back to Afternoon Delight. So our next topic is about condition. When it comes to gossip topic, I don't think we can leave out that. Yeah. So Chris Jenner received a lot of birthday uh, love, love over the weekend. The Keeping Up with the Kardashian star to, turned 61 on Saturday and celebrated with her family and her friends and a lot of other celebrities, um, even though her boyfriend, Corey Gamble. But Chris, um, but Kim Kardashian uh, didn't show up because she was shooting and some stuff uh, in another country, I guess. Um, but he, but she did tweet um, her mother about the happy birthday and give her a priceless gift. So we know, like every year, Kardashian's family spend a lot of man, ma like money on birthday celebration, on party. So what do you guys think about that? I think that's kind of even though the typical Kardashian celebration birthday, I think. Yeah, I think so. And back in China, we have a lot of like rich second generation do that a lot. Yes. Yeah. I mean, even, even though in LA, I mean, there are a lot of a like bunch Chinese of kids, yeah, they do the same thing, like similar to Kardashian. I does. mean, so. yeah, this is not even like Chinese or American culture, I think it's all over the world. They're just celebrating as much as they can, I think, to yeah. remember their birthday or something. I yeah. think their birthday parties are bigger than most people's weddings. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and the Kendall Jenner, Kim's Kardashian sister, and she's almost the Kardashian's newest, super, newest superstar, and mm -hmm. she just celebrated her 21st birthday last Thursday mm -hmm. and she was gifted a Rolls Royce. Can you oh, believe yeah. that? Wow. At the 21st birthday, I wish I could get a Rolls Royce at my 21st birthday as well. Yeah. I think I got a Cavalier. <laughs> <laughs> I got a great dinner, but that was great. Nice. Yeah, I haven't turned 21 yet, so hopefully. Great for you. <laughs> Good drink. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and Miranda Kerr and Evan Spader had their engagement party, which um, 
with their friends and families over the past weekend as well. It is really good to see my favorite model. Oh, that's your favorite yeah, model? Yeah, to finally achieve her happiness. Like, I love her. She just did so great in the Victoria's Secret shows. Do yeah. you, have you have you watched that before? Yeah, I did. Yeah, she was, she did great. I mean, uh, she always like have the three wings of that. I mean, like third, like third times is her third times. I don't, I don't remember of that, but yeah, it's like a lot of times. Yeah, she's yeah. gorgeous. Yeah, that's a huge achievement for a model. I mean, yeah. And next one, uh, like, let's talk about like Drake. You know, Drake is showing yeah. Taylor Swift just how much he cares about her by doing something very special. Um, we know that Taylor Swift loves her cat. And uh, um, Drake actually stopped into a pedico and went back, uh, went back on, I don't know, wired on cat accessories for Taylor. And he also prepared to send her a stick uh, designer bag that she can put her cats in when, when she go outside and when she like, yeah, do stuff and traveling. It's Drake being Drake and his way of letting her know uh, that she is a good people and uh, keeping her close to him. I think that's very sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys think it's got a chance with like between them? I don't know. <laughs> Can I say that I don't know too much about Drake? But yeah. you know a lot about Taylor, Taylor Swift. Swift. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like she has a lot of fans in China. Like because mm -hmm. I w used to work in the broadcast uh, station in my high school, mm -hmm. and there's gonna be there were always students coming over and uh, play Taylor Swift songs. That's like, crazy. Yeah. Like every time we had a break, then it's Taylor Swift, and at last we just got tired of that. Yeah. So when did you first become a fan? What? When did you first become a Taylor Swift fan? Oh, I'm not her fan. I'm just. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, she was yes. kind of host of the like studio, right? Yes. Yeah, that's gotcha. why. Yeah. But I think Taylor Swift has been on broadcasting for a lot of years, and she recently got one of the gossip from his ex ex boyfriend again. Can you believe that? Seriously? Okay. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah, Which boyfriend you mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's I'm country. not trying to be mean. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, it's Kevin, uh, Calvin Harris, the Scotland DJ. Oh, the the songwriter. Like his boyfriends, like, no, I mean, his ex-boyfriends are always cute. <laughs> I know, they are always <laughs> handsome, by the way. Yeah. And she, he, like, last uh, November 4th, and he posted something on Twitter saying that he was blessed by he was blessed by working with Rih uh, Rihanna and Taylor Swift. So, can you see something different from the Twitter? Yes. From the next, I think it's not really a. a yeah, there you know. are always a lot of going on. Well, what do you think yeah. about Taylor Swift? I don't know too much about her. I, I know that she's I been around. I thought everyone loves her. I don't know. Yeah, I just know that she's been around, and I see her in USA Today, and I see her on TV, and uh, she, I think she's here to stay. Have you ever like heard her songs and yeah. listened to her songs? No, I honestly don't think I ever have. Oh, really? I, I just wow. read about her in the paper. I see her on the Internet. I see her uh, get awards. But mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think I've ever heard her sing. Okay. I have somehow missed that. Do you think there are a lot of people are Taylor Swift fan here? In the U.S., I think so. I mean, everybody. Because like, even so though my roommates, I just like ask them which singer is your favorite show. Is it Taylor Swift? And then yeah. she can like sing every single song of her. Yeah, seriously, yeah. that's that's quite a lot. That's you know? a huge fan. <laughs> yeah, but I think I mean like she was a country music girl, but right oh, yeah. recently she 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 wrote about like a lot of pop songs. What do you guys think about that? Is you because just commercial thing or well a lot of country is now more like pop than it used to be I mean yeah, uh, I so. country today versus 30 years ago you just need to follow the trend you know yeah. so like meets people's needs you know yes. not everyone Appeal is a fan right. of country yeah. music more of a mass I'm audience not. <laughs> right. yeah I'm definitely yeah. not <laughs> okay yeah. okay we're talking about singer um, actually my favorite singer is Adele She's I my just saw favorite. her. You, ju you just saw her? I saw Adele this summer in St. Paul. 
uh, oh, with my gosh. wife. I, I got uh, my wife tickets last Christmas, and and the tickets were for July 6th at the Excel Energy Center. That's amazing. We went up there, and I wasn't sure what to expect because I haven't haven't been to a concert of that magnitude in quite mm -hmm. a while. Sure. The concerts I've been seeing lately have been have have been in smaller venues. Um, and for me to go to a, a giant stadium uh, like that again was, was fun and it was refreshing and I thought mm -hmm. that Adele really knocked it out of the park. Um, her voice is tremendous and her yeah, rapport with I the with the audience was wonderful. She had a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with people in the audience and oh, invited people amazing. up on stage and talked to them and, and uh, would single people out in the back and come on up here and let me talk to you for a moment or sing to an eight-year-old girl that was sitting up front and um, it made it uh, for the setting what is about 20 thousand people that can fit in the XL Energy Center. It made it feel a lot more intimate and personable. Mm -hmm. And um, me not knowing too much about Adele, um, it made me feel all the more welcome and it made me enjoy her show tremendously. And then my wife was seventh heaven. She was ecstatic oh all gosh. the way home. So um, what, what a show. Yeah, yeah. She's my favorite singer. She's and I actually favorite. booked the ticket for the next concert in LA Yeah. Yeah, this winter. So I'm so excited. You're, go you're she going to see her in LA? Yeah, oh, I am. When, when's to. the date? I think it's the um, January something. January? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah, you're in for a treat. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's watch a sport promo next. Introducing WMCM's newest sports show, Hot Shot Sports. It's got games, memes, highlights, GIFs and everything else that you'd ever want from a sports show, like everything current from social media and all other sports action. So tune in to Charter Channel 989 and Campus Channel 6 for some hot shot sports. Do you need better opinions on the biggest sports stories? Then you need Sports Talk Live. They cover all sports all the time. From track and field, to soccer, to football, gymnastics, and just about everything in between. Sports Talk Live is your place for sports. Sports Talk Live, Tuesdays on WMCM TV. Right. Yes, today is Election Day, Tuesday, November 8th, 2016, and um, a lot of people are out there voting today. This is uh, something r rather unique. Election year is always a leap year, and uh, here we are voting once again for the leaders of the nation and um, the state and our municipalities. Um, I did vote about two, maybe three weeks ago via absentee to get my voice heard, and we'll see where everything goes tomorrow um, or possibly, possibly later tonight with the um, election results. And I'm curious because uh, the three of you are not from the United States, and I can only imagine what your perspective on this election process must be like. I mean. You're here, you're looking at it, and you're like, what's this all about? What's going on? Um, so what are you thinking on this election day here in the U.S. that you're here observing it firsthand? The one thing I can come up with is it took so long. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like information around all the time. Last night I was trying to find a newscast to write in my credit, but I just like found everything about the election, about Trump and Hillary. Uh, actually, back in China, we don't have like this kind of process to do election because mm -hmm. we like a it's not for like every single citizen. Yeah, it's not. So certain citizens get to vote and some don't. I um, mean, some of us like we vote some of uh, we vote one person like for representative. representative. Yeah, representative yeah. Okay. Okay. for us. Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. So the president? Did you? I, I'm not sure if I understand. Somebody votes for you. Yeah, it's kind of like so. Like, because we, we have a our lot of people in China, so right. we can like like vote uh, for each of us. We just like vote for maybe like one city or one. I think city, right? It's not province. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's like city. We have like several representatives. We vote, and then they're gonna vote for us. Yeah. But and I actually I think the vote process doesn't really it, work well. It's <laughs> not. Back home it, it doesn't, doesn't work really well. really matter. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, it doesn't. Because. Uh, my mom is one of the representative, but I mean she has a lot of meetings and stuff. But I'm not sure whether her vote will really count. That's the that's the point I think. Okay. So before so the vote, you, we mm -hmm. we kind of know who is gonna be the rest next to Yeah, president. mostly we will know before so, the yeah. vote. Yeah. 
Okay, so it's from when you say that you already know in advance, it sounds like it's a formality to go through the process. It sounds kind of. What okay. do you think? That's exactly what you said because um, I don't know too much about the voting thing because I have because I don't have a I don't have a political background yeah. and all my family are like far away from the political yeah. field and like I just know um, um, there's gonna be like representatives who will like stand for our opinions to vote for the presidents but I don't know when they are voting how everything goes because that's like something far I don't away think from we even have an opinion you know yeah so they didn't even you don't ask have an us. opinion they don't ask us they don't ask you it doesn't really opinion. matter i mean they, yeah. they tell your whether opinion to we, you whether we are no. gonna choose who to be the next president or not because it doesn't really matter about wh like what we're gonna think or what we're gonna vote so we just have him so <laughs> yeah. based on what you just said here it is election in the u.s mm -hmm. so here's everybody that is able to vote voting mm -hmm. and they're expressing their opinion with their ballots what is that like for you to see that like oh my gosh th anybody can vote you know yeah. how, how do you feel about that I think to a large extent it is very good for people to have the rights to vote for like who uh, they want to support to be the next president but one as this can be lead to more like issues too because okay. it takes so long because everybody has their own opinion and it, they want like certain person to be right president. and about that you say the process is so long um, what is how long is your process and how long do you think our process may be since oh. you say it's long I mean how long is our process is I mean is it like a month too long three months too long I mean it, it like, as I mentioned, we already know like, who's going to be the next one, so we right. don't really care about the process anymore, you know? Sure, yeah, sure. Yeah, that's why, so it's it not So that kind of tires hard. you out, mm -hmm. because it is so long, that, that kind of makes you like, oh, I'm not as interested anymore. Yeah, and I feel like the, like, if everyone can vote, it's going to be a little bit messed up. In yeah. China, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it's kind of interesting to see that those two parties fight against each other. Like mm -hmm. I've seen news about Hillary Clinton and uh, Don Donald Trump, like some dramas. It's I feel like there is always drama coming up every day. Yeah. So we're gonna go into um, perfect paths. Why? <laughs> Hi there, I'm Aloha, four months old brown tiger, and I'm very friendly and curious. Hi, I'm Felicia. I'm a 10 month old lab and pointer mix. I'm very energetic and needs lots of exercise, but I'm also very loving. Hi, I'm Moira. I'm a 12 week old kitten, and I'm not interested in anything other than playing with you. Hello, I'm Winslow. I'm a five-year-old lab mix. I'm very outgoing and sociable, and very well-mannered. To find out more about adoption for these pets or others, contact the Cooley Region Humane Society at 781-4014. Well, we're almost out of time today. I'd like to thank you for joining us here at uh, WMCN. Uh, today we discussed the Cardassians, and we talked about Natalie Portman, and we talked about... Uh, a little bit of Star Wars, the Rogue One, and voting in Wisconsin and voting in the United States, and learned a little something about uh, voting uh, in China as well. And um, I don't know, what are your... Yeah, and my favorite singer, Adele. Favorite singer, <laughs> Adele. We talked a little bit about that, and yeah. she's in for a treat. When she sees Adele in January, yeah, it's going I'm to excited. be a brilliant show. Um, I would see it again. And Absolutely. my favorite model, Miranda Kerr. There you Got go, engaged Miranda. with her fiancé. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite supermodel, Gigi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's my favorite too. <laughs> yeah, I would think that if I can, I can kind of like Eliana stay like perfect body after giving a birth. That will be perfect. That will be one of my drink. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we go, uh, just something I wanted to ask really quick. I mm -hmm. mean, uh, how has your stay in Wisconsin been? Um, uh, has it been? Good, bad, otherwise, would you come back and visit the state again someday? Absolutely. Yeah, I love I the snow. I would definitely 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love snow because back yeah. in my country I never saw snow before, you know. You never I, saw snow before? I, I'm from like very south of China. Right. Yeah, so never. Three of us. Yeah. Well, if I went the rest of my life without ever, ever seeing snow again, I would be happy. <laughs> <laughs> There's you a lot like of snow. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, yeah. some years. Some years I ask why I'm still here. But uh, that's all the time that we have. Uh, stay tuned to WMCM. The Week in Review is next.